Hello, I'm Jay Buckley, Technical Training Manager at Fram Filters. Welcome to the first video for the 2011 Fram Challenge. This video will focus on what we call oil filter anatomy. We're going to take you through the components of an engine oiling system and then the oil filter, showing you how they work and how they're made. We'll also compare several types of oil filters so you can clearly see how one oil filter can differ from another. It all starts with the sump or oil pan. Oil is stored in the pan until the engine is started. When the engine begins to rotate, the oil pump is driven. The pump will draw oil up from the sump and push it through the filter. Since engine oil pumps are positive displacement pumps, they will build more and more pressure as engine speed increases. So they need a way to regulate the oil pressure. Most incorporate a pressure regulator valve into the block. This is usually a simple spring and plunger that will unseat at a predetermined pressure level and dump excess oil pressure back to the pan. Trust me, if this valve sticks, you can quickly develop engine damaging levels of oil pressure. A telltale sign of this valve sticking is a bulging oil filter or a filter that has blown the o-ring out. After the filter, the bearings of the engine are fed oil under pressure. Residual oil will then drain back to the pan from the force of gravity. So let's talk about oil filters. Most people really don't know what's in the can. We know there's some kind of filter media, but what else? Let's start with the can. The can is actually stamped from flat steel stock using a progressive series of dies to get to its final configuration. The can is made thick enough to prevent leaks and damage from road debris and thin enough to be lightweight. The next component is the tapping plate. This is the end of the can and it's also the business end of the filter. The tapping plate contains the threads that hold the filter to the engine and a groove that holds the rubber square ring. It also has a series of holes where the oil enters from the oil pump. The large hole in the middle is the exit for the oil to go into the engine and lubricate the engine bearings. The next part is the anti-drain back valve. Some call it a flapper valve, but the correct terminology is anti-drain back valve. This valve may be made from nitrile rubber in standard filters or silicone rubber in premium filters. So what does it do? The anti-drain back valve is a one-way check valve. It allows oil to flow from the oil pump and into the filter can while the engine is running. With the engine running, it's open to flow. When the engine is shut off, it closes. Why? To keep the filter and engine oil passages full of oil and to prevent dry starts if the vehicle's been sitting for a while. Remember, the oil goes from the pump to the filter first and there's no oil lubricating the engine until the filter and engine oil passages are full. Many oil filters may be mounted at angles to the engine or positions that would allow the filter and engine oil passages to drain out overnight if they didn't have the anti-drain back valve. Not all filters will have this valve. If the filter mounts in a straight up and down vertical position in some engine designs, it may not be equipped with an anti-drain back valve. Next, let's discuss the real working part of the filter, the media cartridge. The filter media has two jobs. First, to remove the dirt the first time it goes through the filter, or efficiency. Second, to trap and hold dirt until the next filter change, or capacity. The media has to accomplish this without impeding the flow of oil through the filter. Not all filter media is created equal. While a lot of its composition is cellulose, Fram engineers also blend the cellulose with synthetic glass and polyester fibers for greater strength and to increase its ability to trap and hold dirt. Many inexpensive filters use a plain cellulose media which can only achieve an efficiency rating of around 80%. Fram engineers have come up with a high performing blend of cellulose and several different synthetic fibers. This allows for less media in the cartridge with better performance than plain cellulose media. This is why Fram oil filters are rated in the 95 to 99% efficiency range. This is what the media looks like before pleating. It actually comes in huge rolls that are fed into a pleating machine. The result is this long accordion of pleated media. This media is wrapped around the steel center tube to form the cartridge. Then a plastisol glue is applied to seal the engineered fiber end caps onto the cartridge. Now, 
A lot of noise is made in the industry about what the best end cap material is. The end cap itself is not a structural element of the filter. It only serves to hold the glue that seals the ends of the media cartridge. Fram engineers began using engineered fiber end caps more than 45 years ago. They do this because they know that the bond of the glue is better when you're gluing two porous surfaces together. The Fram team has built over 2 billion filters this way. In video 2, we'll show you the hot oil testing that we do every day to prove out this technology. There are many vehicle manufacturers today that use similar technology, including Bentley, Honda, GM, and Subaru. In fact, today many newer Toyota OE filters use no end caps at all. The next part of the oil filter is the bypass valve or relief valve. This valve has two very important functions. The first function is making sure your engine has oil flow and pressure on a cold start. When your oil is cold, it can be very thick and resistant to flow. It may be too thick to actually flow through the filter media. When that happens, this valve will open and allow oil to get to the engine and lubricate the bearings. As the engine and oil warm up, it will close and let the oil go through the filter media. The second function is proper oil flow when the filter reaches its full capacity. All oil filters have a finite capacity to trap and hold dirt, which we'll discuss at length in video two. When the filter reaches its full capacity, it loses its ability to flow oil through the media. The bypass valve will open and allow unfiltered oil to get to the engine bearings. This is not an ideal situation, but it's better than no oil at all. Why would this happen? Because the filter's been left on the car beyond its useful life. There are many factors in oil change intervals. These include driving style and trip length, quality of oil and filter used, and even frequency of maintenance since the car was new. What does that mean? A vehicle that has had a lot of short trip driving without regular oil and filter changes may have a lot of sludge internally. This can cause filters to become full faster than normal. And finally, the last part of the filter is the leaf spring. This spring exerts a force of over 70 pounds to seal the media cartridge against the anti-drain back valve. Now we'll give you a brief overview of the differences between several different types of oil filters. While many are familiar with the standard Fram Extra Guard orange can, Fram also offers three other filters to suit different change intervals and driving styles. The Fram Extra Guard is designed for 5,000 mile change intervals. It features a 95% efficiency rating and is designed to be used with conventional oil. The filter is built with cellulose and synthetic glass media and a sure grip bottom for easy removal and installation. Next in the lineup is the high mileage filter. This filter has the same benefits as the Extra Guard, but with an added feature. It has a basket inside that contains a time release gel that conditions and protects the oil in higher mileage engines. The anti-corrosive additives actually condition the oil and help maintain the pH balance on vehicles with more than 75,000 miles. This is no gimmick. This technology helps to increase drain intervals on heavy trucks. High mileage filters also feature SureGrip for easy removal and installation. The next filter in the lineup is the Fram Tough Guard. This filter is designed for up to 7,500 mile oil changes and can be used with semi-synthetic or fully synthetic oil. This filter has a silicone anti-drain back valve for longer life. It also has more synthetic content in the media for a 99% efficiency rating. The last filter in the lineup is the Fram Extended Guard. Many of today's vehicles call for oil changes ranging from 7,500 to even 10,000 mile intervals when using fully synthetic oil. The Fram Extended Guard filter is the right filter to use with these extended intervals. Why? First, it uses a pleated steel media screen held in place by steel end caps. The steel pleats are then wrapped with two layers of highly synthetic and polyester glass blend filtering media. This results in a filter with almost double the dirt trapping capacity of the average leading economy filter. It also has a silicone anti-drain back valve for long life and a 97% efficiency rating. 
thank you for completing the first video in the 2011 FRAM Challenge. We hope that this focus on oil filter anatomy has given you some useful insights into how oil filters work, their internal components, and the different types of oil filters. Thank you for your time.